So next up is uh, Danny Michaels from the National Institute for Newman Studies. Uh, he is the Chief Technology Officer for the National Institute for Newman Studies. And he has a deep root in educational technology and digital humanities. Recently, he has been the president of Trend Academic, VP of Ongoose Metrics, the CIO of Quincy University. So he's got lots of sort of deep experience in uh, technology connected to educational uh, endeavors. He's the immediate past president of the Newman Foundation of Northern Ohio. And he's a board member of the Commission on the Franciscan Intellectual Tradition. He's a past treasurer of the College Theology Society, and he does research on medieval biblical exegesis and developed the 3D gaming software of the Basilica of St. Francis in Assisi. And I heard more about this at lunch, and I don't know if he's going to have time in the question period, but it's a really fascinating project. So uh, here comes. Vertically challenged. Are you able to hear me from the vertically challenged in an unconventional way? All right, there was a time, as we learned from Tom this morning, not long ago, when archives were locked away to keep them safe. From mostly malicious eyes, or so they thought, privileged few walked the stacks, and those who were admitted created yet more tomes for safekeeping. Security was so important, in fact, that some were locked and chained to tables, as were many of the resources that I used when I studied in Italy. In our collections at NINS, like so many others, spatial and financial constraints meant staff reductions with limited public access, particularly with our partners in the UK. So thousands of letters, diaries, photos, and more were packed into boxes and tucked away. Thus, with exception to the published letters and diaries by Oxford University Press, which only accounts for a fraction of our collections, Newman's correspondence remained hidden for over a century. Even a young collection, say one from the 1950s or one from 2017 or 2016 forward, can face many of the same spatial and financial uh, challenges. At the National Institute for Newman Studies, or NINS, <coughs> we developed archival software in collaboration with other universities and institutions that for us is transforming the way our curators and end users interact with and share archival resources. Our way is not the only way, but hopefully this, will preservation will, this presentation will inspire you to unlock your resources and transcend brick and mortar as we did. Uh, we have several different data types. NIN's collections includes published books, articles, journals, unpublished letters, notes, poems, musical scores, photographs, and we've even considered 3D architecture and objects in the near future. We have approximately 4,500 books, articles, and journals, totaling over 2 million pages, about 200 terabytes of data. That's about uh, maybe 600,000 movies on YouTube, something like that. Over 300 boxes of handwritten manuscripts, including recent acquisitions, which is approximately 500,000 pages or another 80 terabytes of data. We have a lot of stuff for a small little niche, niche group. Like many institutions, uh, NIN's digital transfer, transformation has taken a few decades and gone through a few iterations. With grants and assistance from Microsoft and the University of Toronto, from 2005 to 2010, NIN's digi digitized all of their 19th and early 20th century publications, including books, articles, encyclopedias, and so forth. Most of the doc these documents were uploaded to archive.org at the time of scanning, but they can be found today in NIN's digital collections at numastudies.org. They're also still available on archive.org. From 2013 to 2016, NIN's partnered with the oratories of Pittsburgh and Birmingham to scan 265 boxes of handwritten manuscripts. Scanning was complete in 2016, and we've been working on metadata and transcriptions ever since. This collection is particularly important because over 60% of it has never been published, and in some cases, never seen. 
Most of these rare items include letters written to Newman, whereas most published resources contain letters written by Newman. So we, are, we sort of have the other side of the story. From 2018 to today, NINS developed and launched RedNull, the archival platform that I will share in the coming slides. By 2022, by today, NINS opened doors for partnerships around the world, nearly doubling the size of our collections. It's important to note that NINS made a conscious effort to break free from the paradigm of preserve and protect to preserve and project. In other words, our digital strategy is interactive and interoperable, particularly with other libraries and institutions, but also with a wide breadth of users, religious orders, religious researchers, and so on. Our systems are designed to network out rather than wall off, a strategy that has exploded research on Newman while simultaneously re reducing our workload in the archives. More on this later. For the remainder of our time, I will sh sh share our success with RedNull, the software we developed that shifted our archival paradigm from closed to open. <coughs> the inspiration for the platform. No one can say how big Google Earth and Google Maps are, but we, mo we, bo we know that they have an incalculable amount of data. There are 24 million satellite photos from the past 37 years, 7.3 billion users, contributors per year, 170 billion street views, 20 peta petabytes of geocoded addresses. I don't even have a mental picture for that amount of data. In a world that's constantly changing, Google Earth and Google Maps give us the most complete picture of Earth, combining 3D topography, location data, street view, and platform into, into a platform anyone can explore, annotate, save, and share. Does that sound familiar? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to annotate, explore, and share. So this was a major inspiration for us. And social media exploits a similar technology to deliver seemingly endless amounts of metadata and image assets. After doing tons of research on library systems, archival platforms, asset management systems, and related technologies, we ultimately concluded that everyone desires advanced exploration of their digital assets, including annotations, images, and more, but few could deliver it on a Facebook-like or a Google-like scale. So faced with massive amounts of our own data, we decided that we wanted a combination of the technologies powering libraries, but also technology like Google Maps and Google Earth and social media in our archival system. Sort of like an archival Frankenstein monster, although actually the, the, the components that we use are pretty standardized. Um, as our friends from Duquesne will tell you, some of the elements are used across many universities. Our goals are radically, also radically different than, than Google or Facebook. Lord knows we don't need any more memes of reality stars yelling at cats, but tech, the technical methodology is similar, including advanced search, Deep zoom, interactive, interactivity, interoperability, and so on. Um, anyone who's ever spent any time on Facebook is probably familiar with the uh, cat screaming <laughs> meme. Uh, we set out to create Rednall, which is named after the oratory country house that Newman would escape to when he needed time off from Birmingham. Rednall is an online archiving program that provides unprecedented levels of uniform and rich access to high-resolution image-based archives, metadata, and transcriptions, including advanced search, data visualization, and dynamic content. File size is no longer an issue with this platform. We decided that it had to be friendly, in other words, easy for us to use, easy for curators to use, fast, feature-rich, mobile on any device, interoperable, that is, it uses shared data libraries between institutions that make it possible to share content into and out of the system in new and varied ways. It also had to be scalable, that is, perfect for NINs and future collections, but also as a platform for others to use. We required the, the following technical cap capabilities, and this sort of answers some of the how of how we approach things that had to be encompassed in the system that we used. And the first thing we decided is we had to be create. We had to be able to create. 
the raw act of managing assets, import, edit, manage, delete media. We believe that archivists should be free of software code and be able to manipulate all points of the digital workflow. Annotation is critical. This, this requires human interaction and ingenuity. Garbage in equals garbage out. So this is where we mark up, encode, link, transcribe, standardize, format, and so on. And we do all those things inside of our system without relying on third-party systems. With larger and larger data sets comes more responsibility to make complex associations between documents. Having massive amounts of data isn't much good if users can't find it. So advanced search is critical. I'll show you a little bit soon. And finally, digital collections should stimulate our imagination, which means there is an inherent pedagogy and dynamism to the architecture of any digital archiving platform. Deep zoom, layers on layers, colorizing, flipping, rotating, comparing, sharing, importing, visualizing the unseen and discovering the unexpected, and imagining leads to more creating, more annotating, more discovering, and so on. Now, Rendall consists of two systems, one and an entire ecosystem of virtual servers. And that is the software that makes it tick. There's administrative inter interface for curators and a front end website for end users. We only have time to examine a handful of features from the front end. And I wish I could spend all my time telling you how we did it, because as Ken will tell you, I get pretty jazzed up about it. If you want me to tell you, just email me or I'm happy to come to you and, and share, because I, I could talk about it until I'm blue in the face. Um, Deep Zoom. This is sort of like Google Earth for manuscripts. We stole this from the International Image Interoperability Framework. Unlimited zoom with unlimited pixels, and it supports 3D objects, just like Google Earth. I've seen this exact technology used to depict the entire solar system, which is hundreds of thousands of pixels. You can zoom in on a manuscript and lock the zoom level and switch between pages as often as you like. Non-destructive image manipulation. This is critical because uh, this means that we can save our original archival images, put them in cold storage, and manipulate them uh, without actually changing the images. We do it all mathematically. Here we have a manuscript, Tom mentioned an example earlier, in which the author decided to save, or write on, save on paper by turning the manuscript on its edge and writing in the other direction. This was either a cruel joke or it was much more legible when it was first written. Fortunately, users have image editing tools in our platform that allow them to rotate, colorize, desaturate, subtract contrast, make black and white or invert, and thus editing the images with these tools is non-destructive. In other words, the image doesn't actually change. So in this case, you can modify the parameters to better read the text that you rotated on the screen. Compare documents. One of the most powerful tools is the ability to compare documents. To compare documents. Users are able to open an infinite amount of documents on top of one another and view them side by side or in any configuration on the screen. Search filters are built into each document so that you can find exactly what you need for comparison. And once loaded, you can enjoy all of the image editing tools, transcriptions, zoom, and other tools from inside each individual document on the screen. As a result of this process, when comparing thousands of Newman letters, our curators have discovered a wide range of writing styles for Newman himself. In fact, if you try to transcribe Newman, you're quickly going to discover that he has like 15,000 different alphabets because he writes the A one way one day and he writes it a different one the next. Um, characters in one letter are totally different from characters in another. Sometimes it's, it's as if multiple people were writing as Newman, but after comparing enough of them, we realized that in fact they are all Newman. After transcribing the letters, we started to see writing patterns related to Newman's mood. Thus, we can predict when he was angry or sad or sick or aging or young, and we are investigating artificial intelligence algorithms that will help us dig deeper. With so much data at our fingertips, we can build tools to visualize themes. This is a sunburst depicting five major themes in Newman's writing, infallibility, conscience, papacy, ascent, and development. 
Click on any one theme and it drills down to the authors, dates, and, and finally titles of works related to that theme. Click on an item and it opens that item and performs a search for you on that term. So here we have conscience. This visualization depicts Newman's journey to Rome in 1846. Clicking on a marker on the map reveals documents that Newman actually wrote from that location at that time. Tabs inside the document allow users to return to the map to select the next waypoint. And curators can add these data, data visualizations through the admin interface. As many, they can add as many as they want based on tags that are added to the metadata in the items. So if they want to create a map related to a different journey, Newman made three journeys to Rome, we could add those other journeys as soon as we've cataloged that metadata. Or maybe we want to do something related to his uh, time in England, or we want to do concepts other than those five I mentioned before. Advanced search. Rednall's search functionality is powerful. Users can search by metadata or they can search by text content. Across, that is inside, all documents. Millions of words and characters are indexed. In this example, we're searching for Catholic University. You can choose any word, all words, exact phrase, or a wildcard search. The thumbnails in the results actually depict the first page containing your search terms. And it tells you how many results were across how many pages. You can filter your results even further by choosing a creator, that is an author, or a contributor, the person to whom they wrote, the date, the collection, the, the, the subject, the call number, and more. Click on a document and you'll see the search results inside that document. You can also modify your search terms from within that document instead of returning to the original generic search. You, you could also then open up an additional document inside of that document and compare if you wish. Transcriptions. Transcriptions can be added to any canvas in a document. Published works, pu published works that is typeset documents have transcriptions created automatically through our optical character recognition engine. Handwritten manuscripts, uh, transcripts can be imported in bulk or added to canvases one by one. Transcriptions can be copied to your clipboard for use in publications. There is even a button below the document viewer, which is not pictured here, that allows you to bookmark to a specific page in a document for later reference. Now we're running out of time, so I have just a few concluding remarks. Rednall has unlocked a whole new world of scholarship on Newman and his contemporaries. We get contacted routinely by other institutions that find Newman or Newman-related content in their own collections. And they, they desire to share these images with their images with us. More, more and more scholars are setting aside published, they're, they're setting aside published secondary sources in critical editions, such as the 32 volumes of Newman's uh, letters and diaries, in favor of using the original manuscripts because of our collections. And the burden of site visits to the cloister in Birmingham has been lifted from the community, freeing up resources for additional archive work on more manuscripts. We've partnered with the Archdiocese of Birmingham, several, several Oxford University libraries. The British Library has done with, work with us and shares our content. The Diocese of Westminster in the UK. And we have an additional 15 projects in our queue. Many have contacted us desiring to use Redinall for their own collections. Because and because scaling was a critical piece of our original design strategy, we're exploring ways to share our software. In fact, we have already, already have a, a queue of, qualita, of qualified institutions. Now again, I don't have time to go into the how, uh, but I'd be happy to share with any of, you, any of you the how we did it, even if it just gives you one piece of the, tr the puzzle that you're trying to solve for your own communities, for your own libraries, for your own uh, collections. So thank you very much.